Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and it is yet again the beginning of another month. So we're here to do my July reading wrap up. It was a little bit of a slower reading month for me. I only got to five books, but some of those books were really long books. So I think I still read like a similar volume. It was just in fewer books, if that makes sense. All right, so let's start with my first read of the month, which was The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. And I gave this one four and a half out of five stars. So this was a reread for me. I originally read it, I think, towards the end of 2021, but I didn't rate it then because I wasn't like rating books yet. So I'm not, I don't remember exactly what my initial thoughts on this were. I know a lot of people say it's like not the best Wheel of Time book and that has like a lot of flaws, but honestly, I think it is a great entry into the series, like a great way to begin everything off. And it's partially because like we begin in the two rivers in like a small isolated part of Jordan's greater world, which allows us to be a lot more grounded at the beginning because you only have to learn about this one specific small part of the world. And then after our inciting incident where our characters have to leave their small little world and go out into the bigger world, we're able to learn more about the world alongside them as they learn about it, which is one of my favorite ways to experience world building just because I feel like it allows like info dumps and that sort of thing to be like smaller and more spread out so they make more sense for the story and like the characters like they just fit in better because it's like oh this character is like leaving this place and going to this new place and they don't know anything about that new place so it makes sense for somebody to tell them about it or for them to like look around and learn stuff about it you know i will say that the part where they all get split up in shatter the goth is a bit like comical and maybe like convenient but I can see why it needed to happen so that our characters could like go out their different ways and like learn specific things about the world that we need to know and also like to allow for more individual character development than if they were all like in one group. This way they're able to find out the things about themselves that they need to learn for the rest of the series. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the ending. So if you don't want any spoilers, skip ahead about 30 seconds or so. I'll try to remember to put a timestamp. But the ending to me feels a little bit rushed. Like it takes up a decent number of like pages, at least what I would consider to be like the ending. Like there's obviously not like a definite, like, okay, the ending starts here. But my point is that's like, we spend all this time in the book going to Camelon or Tarmalon or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's just like, okay, all of a sudden we need to go to the eye of the world. And it's not super well explained. Like why all of a sudden we have to do that? We just like, go based off like a few like hints that these some characters got but these hints were like not necessarily like things that were said like recently so it's like well why specifically like right now we have a rush we have to go there now that's not like super explained and then i remember the first time i read this being kind of confused by what happened at the end and i even still sort of was this time so rand is drawn from the eye of the world right but then it's like he climbs these stairs. It's like, so is he climbing these stairs like into the dream world or is it like straight up into the Dark One's prison? And then like he cuts the cord of like the Dark One tying him to the source. So it's like, did he gentle him? It's a little bit confusing and not really explained. It's like, I get that like maybe Rand doesn't really know, but it was still kind of just like from like a reader's perspective, like. I'm not totally sure how the book ended because Rand's like, ah, oh, I've killed the Dark One, but Moraine is like clearly like not convinced. So it leaves us a little bit like, so what exactly happened there? And then no more spoilers. So I'm going to talk a bit more generally, but I really think that Jordan's world building in this series is really top tier because he sprinkles in like all these little bits of information that like we might not necessarily get explained in this book or even in like the second book. But as you reach different parts of the series, those things that were seeded earlier on start to fit into like the world and like make sense more. And it's just like so satisfying because like all these things, it's not like they exist in a vacuum, right? So like they might talk about this thing in this other place. So then when we get to this thing, we're like, oh yeah, this makes sense within the context of the world because other people in the world also know about this thing. So. I think that is really well done. And the world of Wheel of Time is so huge and extensive. There are so many countries and cities each with their own cultures. And while we don't explore all of them in this book, it is, I think, a good entry into 
discovering more about the world in later books. In terms of characters, I think they are pretty good. They're each quite unique, have their own sort of strengths and weaknesses. Um, but I will say that Dynaeve annoys me. Like, she's just too stubborn. I don't know, there's like rant stubbornness, which is like fine, but then Nynaeve is just like on another level and she just sort of, I think with Nynaeve he just kind of took it too far and I did not enjoy that. And none of those characters seem to know how to communicate. Like he really leans into the whole like, ah, men don't know how to talk to women thing as if women were like some other species and not just like also human, you know? But I think overall Eye of the World is a great beginning to Wheel of Time, I think it really sets everything up for us to continue to discover in the rest of the novels. Next up, I read This Is How You Lose the Time War and I gave it five stars. It took me kind of a while to decide what to rate this book. It kind of falls in like the no plot, just vibes category, which is pretty different from like the stuff I usually read. So I wasn't really sure how to compare it to those things, but I ended up giving it five stars just because it made me feel so many things and I feel like most books don't make me like have like deep emotions, you know? And since this is such a short book and it's a standalone coming in at like under 200 pages, I think it's even more impressive that it managed to get that much emotion out of me in such a short time. So the book begins with one of our main characters, Red, discovering a letter that was left for her by one of the agents from the opposite side of the time war, Blue. And it's initially meant kind of like as like blackmail to like hold over Red that like she read the letter, but it sort of evolves beyond that when Red actually decides to reply to the letter. And then from then on out, the rest of the book is told in these really short chapters that are from like the perspective of the character, alternating with the letters that they're actually writing to one another. So through the letters, we get sort of a sense of what the time war is about and like the world that our characters are living in, but that honestly kind of pales in importance like it doesn't seem like it's kind of like the main point the main point is the growing like relationship and emotions between red and blue i don't think i've ever read a book with this kind of complex mashup of like format and timeline that gets really complex because both of our characters are time traveling and like the cause of this time war yet despite this like complex setting and premise the story manages to be really simple like at its soul it's about love in a really like deep and touching way and honestly i was kind of like mind blown how like in so few pages they managed to create a love story that feels so like real and complex and heartfelt the writing is very kind of like i guess i would say floral like especially in the love letters but I think that's kind of how love letters tend to be and honestly it is so beautiful. I think some stories can get along with like a less developed, less beautiful sort of writing style, but the success of this book definitely rests solely on the level of the writing, which definitely does not disappoint. But yeah, I read this book in one sitting, so if you have a spare couple of hours on hand, I would say pick up this book from your library or get yourself a copy, whatever. Just, and then just sit down, make yourself comfy and enjoy this beautifully crafted book. Next up, we have Winter's Heart, book nine of the Wheel of Time, which I gave four stars. So I don't really have a ton to say about Winter's Heart. Um, I think in this book, even more so than in book eight, Path of Daggers, we sort of begin to get out of that middle Wheel of Time slump where things sort of slow down a lot. There were a few things in here that I felt like could have made a little bit more progress in this book, but I can, see why they didn't fully explore that. Um, unfortunately, there's not much Egwene in this book, which is sad because she is one of my favorite characters. And it honestly seemed like we got more Min than we did Egwene, and Min is not one of my favorite characters. Like, I feel like every time we're from Min's perspective, she's like, oh, I like curled my hair and did all this and that to make Rand pay more attention to me and make sure that Rand thinks I'm like beautiful and loves me or whatever, and it's like, Mm, I hate that. I hate the like idea that women should have to change the way that they look or the way that they act or are just to get the attention of some man. Like sometimes I like wish that Wheel of Time was written a little bit more recently and then hopefully we could have gotten rid of some of the sexist undertones that plague this series. Um, but overall, Winter's Heart, it was a good read. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't know, I just don't have that much to say about it. It was a good book. I'm making my way through real time, slowly but surely. After that, I read The Fires of Vengeance, which is book two of The Burning. 
and I gave it three and a half out of five stars. So this book was extremely action-packed and really got down to business. Um, but unfortunately that is kind of one of my main complaints with it is that the book really just kind of felt like battle scene after battle scene and we didn't get a lot of downtime in between to like spend more time with our characters and learn more about them and honestly there are only so many times that I can read a description of somebody being torn apart by demons before I'm like okay let's move on I don't care anymore like give me something new. And I was really hoping that in this book we would see Tao's like motivations expand from the just like pure revenge that he had in the first book. But I mean, as you might guess from the title, Fires of Vengeance, um, that doesn't happen. Although it does seem like maybe we might get some more of that in the next book, which would be good. But I really feel like this book would have benefited from fewer battle scenes and more scenes between like the characters. So we get a chance to see their relationships like grow and develop and see like the characters themselves grow and develop a bit. Like we do have like relationships that are developing and changing, but it just feels like they're done. Like they're not given the proper time for them to like make sense the way they like change. Like they're just like short scenes that seem to be sort of thrown in between all of like the action and battle scenes of this book. I did like learning more about like what happened in the homeland of these people, like the society and what drove them to leave and sort of setting up the idea that maybe what they should be doing is going back there. And then based on the ending, I am actually excited to read the next book because I think Winter has set up an opportunity to explore more of Tao and the structure of the society and the prejudice that they have against the native peoples of this land, which could be really interesting. And yeah, overall, it was a decent book, but somewhat lacking in the deeper characterization, I would say. And finally, the book that took up so much of my reading time this month, To Green Angel Tower, book three of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. And I gave this book five stars. And honestly, I wasn't expecting to enjoy this as much as I did. Like I did like the first two books of this series, but this one was definitely better than either of those. I think it's externally impressive that Williams was able to keep me enthralled throughout this whole 1060 page book. This book is 522,000 words. So for context, Lord of the Rings is about 481,000. So this is longer than this whole trilogy or single book, depending on how you want to look at it. So unlike the last book we were just talking about, Fires of Vengeance, this book is a beautifully balanced blend of combat scenes, character scenes, and world building. One thing I particularly like about this book is that while it contains war and fighting, it doesn't glorify it. Like when other characters who didn't participate in the fighting ask Simon about it, he kind of just like can't really explain it and it has a hard time relating how like terrible it was to be in and it's only like the other characters who actually were in the fighting who understand what he's feeling. And we even have a character who's supposed to be like the greatest sort of knight of all time in this like kingdom and he even is just like, he doesn't like fighting, he only will fight when he thinks that like the result of not fighting would be worse for people than doing the actual fighting, which is interesting, although he's kind of just like a God-fearing, loving kind of character, which is, I don't know, not that interesting to me. It's just kind of giving Knights Templar or something like that, um, holier than thou sort of righteousness kind of vibe, but he's still sort of interesting. Just like, I don't know, maybe he could use like a little bit more depth or something. Something was lacking there. But this do book does feature some really well-written friendships, um, specifically between like Simon and Vinovic. They have a very wholesome friendship that is very sort of deep and founded on mutual like all the mutual experiences that they've had together and as well as some very well written developed and unique characters all of our like main characters have really unique motivations and desires that make the way they act and react feel unique and like fitting to the character in a way that makes them feel a lot more real and human. While I would say the Dragonbone Chair has some pacing issues, this book, I think the pacing was extremely well done. Williams was able to, as I said, keep me enthralled for the whole thousand page book and like drop new like interesting plot points at like the perfect balance to keep things moving along, but while also allowing for like the deeper moments between 
characters to happen like in between the action and like other things that are happening you know if i was going to complain about something i would say that my earlier complaints about this like the series in general still apply like how the religion is really just like retextured christianity which i think is kind of lame for a fantasy book like come on give me something new and interesting and then also Williams has sort of a bit of a habit of leaning on some more sexist kind of ideas in his books. Like Mary, I would say, is a pretty good female character. She's very well-rounded. She's strong without being a strong female character, but she's kind of like the only like lead female in a whole group of a bunch of men. And the other women are kind of just reduced to like accessories and they're kind of single faceted characters that sort of rely on stereotypes of women. And I also really didn't like the like storyline of like, oh, Muri had sex with somebody, so now she's like damaged or like used goods. It really reinforces that double standard that like men who sleep with a lot of women are like better men somehow, but women who sleep with a lot of men are lesser or dirty in some way, which is gross, I hate that. And then one thing that I thought was kind of like, maybe a little like silly is at the end of the book, the okay i'm gonna do some spoilers now again um so skip ahead if you don't want spoilers but at the end like they decide to ask simon to be king and they explain that like oh all the people like love simon they all like know about all his deeds and stuff like everybody knows who he is he's very well known and loved which i guess makes sense but also like simon my boy has never led like anything like you would think they would want somebody who has like at least some experience leading something like anything would be like more than the experience simon has leading like i get that like the people would accept him but you think the advisors that were like choosing the new monarch would see the need for more than this in like a land that has just been torn apart by this huge war like it's gonna need some really good leadership you would think but whatever this is a uh, silly little quirk i guess of the book um but yeah overall i really enjoyed this book i think that williams creates some really interesting and unique characters and simon as a lead is so lovable i guess um that i just really enjoyed following him and i can forgive the sins of this book because i just had such a good time reading it so that is everything that i read in july maybe a few less books than usual but definitely made up for in the girth of some of the books that i read i think i had a pretty good reading month so let me know what you thought of these books if you've read any of these books in the comments below or if there's anything you read this month that was particularly special to you thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time